Next we have a eulogy that's going to uh, be read to you by my father, Gerald Meyer, who's a co-chairman and a founding member of the Vito Mark Antonio Forum. And we'd like to welcome him up. Come on up. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, last year, we had um, the Vito Marcantonio Forum uh, held its first annual um, meeting here, commemoration here for Vito Marcantonio. And it was very nice. It was really very moving, very spiritual, very memorable event. And so this year, which is the 60th anniversary of Marcantonio's uh, death, uh, there was no question that we were going to do it here. But in trying to arrange my thoughts a bit about today, it dawned on me why we didn't discuss that a little bit. You know, I mean, there are so many other possibilities of where you could do this, you know, that are more centrally located, like they have air conditioning, you know. So what is this that we took this for granted without any dispute or discussion? You know, we, we like to talk, us guys, you know, and gals. So, and then they said, you know, we, we, God, we could have met at a Unitarian church in Midtown New York, you know, and, or, you know, we could have had brunch in Little Italy, you know, it is, you know, it's, it, all kinds of possibilities. And then they said, but they really are more reasonable, you know, kind of deeper, more thoughtful possibilities in East Harlem. And so why didn't we do that? I said, we could have met uh, at the site of where he was born, on 112th Street, between uh, 2nd and 3rd, I believe. And in a tenement, cold water flat, probably three rooms, and uh, which is now incorporated, the land is now incorporated into a public housing project. Something that Mark fought for very, very hard to find housing, good housing for the people of uh, East Harlem. Housing that had heat, hot water, where there was sun, where there was air, where the rents were reasonable, uh, and where there was public spaces. And that was achieved, a great victory that he helped to accomplish for East Harlem. And then I said, well, I said, well, if we didn't do it there, we could do it at his uh, political headquarters on 116th Street between 1st and 2nd, a few blocks away. And that headquarters, this very humble storefront, really is, uh, should be a shrine to, uh, to, a to progressive America. And that small storefront with a little bathroom on the side and, you know, whatever, was a great center of successful uh, progressive politics in, in America, where LaGuardia originally, for 10 years, founded that headquarters. He had been the congressman for East Harlem originally, the only Italian in Congress. And he adopted Mark Antonio. He didn't have any children. His, remember, his daughter had died. And uh, he adopted Mark Antonio and saw what a, what, and who was a native of Italian Harlem, which LaGuardia was not. And he brought him in as his aide de camp and he called him my political heir. Well, he meant it. And he brought Mark Antonio into this uh, organization and he learned politics. And when he wasn't learning politics, LaGuardia taught him parliamentary procedure. And when he ran and won for the first of three terms to become not the greatest mayor of New York City, but the greatest mayor ever in the history of the United States, Mark Antonio became the congressman from East Harlem. Mark Antonio loved Lincoln, read all, all about Lincoln. Lincoln, you know, assassinated right before the defeat of the slaveocracy. What a shame that he couldn't have lived a little bit longer, you know. Uh, Roosevelt, oh my God, you know, I mean the leader, the great leader of really of social democracy in America, you know, in fact, and, and the defeater of fascism that allied this country with the Soviet Union to defeat fascism and bring about the end of colonialization. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a great man, the greatest president for sure. And uh, he dies before the end, you know, Martin Luther King dies before he reaches the mountaintop, where it's a mess, things are just beginning. And his vision 
of connecting the civil rights movement to the labor movement to bring about not just legal rights, but social and economic rights dies with him. That's why we're drawn, I think, a, a great deal to the deaths of these leaders because it's, death is not in itself tragic. I mean, death isn't unfair in any way, really, but it can be tragic and it can be unfair. So I think what we pay attention to are the deaths that are unfair and that are in fact tragic. And the death in itself is not tragic. Anybody who thinks that is, they need to grow up, you know, but it's just not true. So, but, but, but here, this is tragic. It's tragic in his case because he died when he was 51 years old. It's unbelievable. How could that be? Remember, he's the only, after LaGuardia, he's the only Italian sitting in Congress. The, one of the largest uh, groups in the United States, 15 million Italians living in the United States, the only Italian living uh, in Congress until 1942. There was someone else elected. We don't want to talk about him too much, but how exceptional that one guy, you know, could find his way not out of the community, but with staying within the community to provide leadership. He got that from Cavello. That was Cavello's message. Go back. Stay with the community. Go back to the community. The message of the social gospel, in fact. And Mark Antonio did that. And that's why we're here today. Had he just taken his chances and went on and upward, he would have we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't know about him. We certainly wouldn't be here today, that is for sure. Nobody would write about him or care, nor should we, in fact. He lived a life, and that was it. He took his chances and did the best he could. And No, that's not what Mark Antonio did. But I think that in this situation of dying at that time, where he had lost everything, it seemed, he lost his seat in Congress because of, of, a, of a type of campaign that I think is very possibly unique in, the, in American political history. I don't know, I can't really prove that, but I don't know personally know of anything that, that measures up to that. The amount of power, the comprehensiveness of it, uh, the, the total out of control nature of it, of the, the lies and the slander and the attacks uh, you know, and using the whole political system to bring him down, to destroy everything that could possibly allow him to get elected, uh, is just breathtaking in its, uh, in the kind of fascistic uh, nature of it. You know, the use of a kind of force to accomplish this goal. And, it, and they finally succeeded, and he was defeated in 1950, although the people in East Harlem continued to vote for him at 60% of the people in Italian Harlem and in El Barrio voted for Mark Antonio on the American Labor Party line in 1950, but he couldn't overcome the other votes in Yorkville and he was defeated. But then everything else was ruined. The American Labor Party was destroyed. And not only when, it was, when they lost their legal standing, the New York State Legislature passed a law stating that no other party in the state of New York could ever again use the word American in its title. So they not only ruined the American Labor Party, they created the conditions to prevent its resuscitation. And this happened all the way around the line. All the unions that supported Mark Antonio were expelled from the CIO, were dragged down, were wrecked. Everything was wrecked. There was nothing for him to stand on. Well, he decided he didn't run in 52. In 54, he was going to run as an independent there. And on the day he died, he had the petitions with him. He wanted to proof them and uh, for the petitioning to get back on the ballot. I don't think he would have won. But it would have begun, perhaps it would have been the beginning of some comeback. And better times were going to be there. Mark Antonio, by the way, unlike many, many other leftists, didn't believe that, that America was not in fascism, that this was a repression. He was a great student of American history and noted all the other periods, the Alien Sedition Acts, the Palmer Rates, where there were terrible repressions in the United States, but those repressions did not constitute fascism. And therefore, to go underground and to not openly fight as a progressive person, he thought was a mistake. In any case, um, he didn't have the chance to prove his point. His heart burst. 
it simply burst and he fell. Now when he, he died, they, they, they came, someone had the sense to see that, that, he, that something had happened and they looked at his effects and what did they find? All these religious medals, scapulas, all kinds of religious symbols and medals. He had never, he always said, identified himself as a Catholic. He always said he was a Catholic. And, and he marched in the processions. He was, and so when he died, he would have a Catholic funeral. And in Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, because that's where he was baptized. I saw the baptismal certificate, by the way. I went there and they found it for me. It was nice to see. And that was his family's church. And they were going to have a big Italian funeral. And all of a sudden, a phone call comes from Cardinal Spellman saying he can't have a Catholic burial because he is, oh, the words, you know, these bureaucratic words, separated from the church, whatever. Well, the, the community and the leaders in the community really came forward in a very effective, dramatic way and formed the Vito Marcantonio Memorial. And they raised money. I'm sure that's where this came from. Because when Marcantonio died, he had nothing. Nothing. And, uh, but they, I'm sure that, and, and the plot and the arrangements, it was a, a vast funeral, a remarkable, dramatic funeral, uh, which the newspapers could not ignore and uh, which was very satisfying in many, many ways. But the follow-up, and part of what the Memorial Society did, was to publish I Vote My Conscience, a 500-page book edited by Annette T. Rubenstein of excerpts from his speeches and debates in Congress, a wonderful, wonderful work. They did other things, but it kind of petered out. And what couldn't be done, and what hasn't yet been done, is to restore Mark Antonio's reputation and his stature and his status in American history. He was the most important civil rights leader for a 10-year period. You read history books on civil rights, his name isn't there. He was the leader in the fight against the Taft-Hartley Act. You look at labor history, his name isn't there. He was, I think, the most important, single most important leader uh, on behalf of immigrants in the history of the United States Congress. That's my guess. B nothing on the literature. On, on He served as congressman for Puerto Rico, which had no congressman. That's getting into the history books. Originally, when I started my research, books on Italians didn't mention him. No mention. Go to the index, missing. Well, that's changed. But there's so much more that needs to be done. Why do we need to do this? We need to do this because to pay our respects. It's about paying respects. It's, it's about giving uh, uh, someone their due, what they deserved. He didn't get what he deserved. And we can, to some extent, fix that. We do that for him, but we also do it for ourselves, for our own self-respect. In giving respects, it has to do with your own self-respect, that you take that on as a responsibility because it's the right thing to do. And if those things aren't fixed, that can happen to you or me or anybody else. Our hope is that, not that we live forever, I hope, I, our hope is, is that the good that we do is remembered and acknowledged. That's what our hope is. That's our best hope, really. And that's why we're here today, I think. That's why I'm here. And I hope that I, that's partly one of the reasons why you're here, too. And I think there's a lot that we can do. We've been doing a lot, the Vito Marc Antonio Forum, and I think there's a lot more to do. And so I want to really express my appreciation on behalf of the Vito Marc Antonio Forum that you are here and welcome you to come back to more of our events. And thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.